So today, uh, we're doing something pretty fun. Uh, something that I've been waiting for for a long time in this game. Uh, we are gonna go for a shiny starter. And when I say go for a shiny starter, I don't mean soft reset for a shiny starter. I mean, we are going to exploit the inner workings of the game and get a shiny starter based on our own knowledge and skill. We are going to manipulate the random number generator of the game and we are gonna get ourselves a shiny starter. Now to do this, uh, I'm gonna need to use my computer and my game together. This is my non-modified switch. So this is my retail copy of Shining Pearl. I haven't even started a file on it yet. So we're gonna start a file here today and we're gonna walk through the process of what it takes uh, to do this. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't fully expect everybody will be able to follow this 100% because there are some deeper steps at, at work here that maybe I'll make a guide for in the future if this uh, if this gets a good enough response. But I wanted to make one that was like an explanation of the method and a demonstration of me doing it and then we can expand from there. So the first step is obviously to just get started here and we're gonna get to Rowan's screen. Hello there, it's so very nice to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Rowan. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've heard it all before, buddy. We've heard it all before. So he's gonna send out this here Munchlax. And this Munchlax is actually the first piece of the exploit. So he's gonna talk, he's gonna talk, and I'm gonna get to the screen where it says, what do I do? I conduct research. Now, why don't you tell me a little about yourself? And now we're gonna switch over to my desktop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor See how that, see how that Munchlax just blinked right there? We're gonna monitor that Munchlax's blinks. And we're gonna do it using a program called Project XS from a good, well, I don't know if I'd call him a friend of mine, but a really great uh, developer and someone that I definitely respect, uh, Lincoln. Um, I believe he based this on a Japanese program. Um, and this is the English version of it. So first I have my command prompt here. I'm gonna hit CD dot slash project underscore xs and then i need to put in a command to launch this python that's right we're using python if you don't know what that is well, then you'll have to wait until we discuss it later uh, python dot slash src slash player underscore blink underscore gui dot pi enter and what that has brought up is this fun program I'm actually just going to plop it right in front of this window here. So this is player blink. What player blink does is track the blinks of things in the game. In this case, we're not going to be tracking a player. We're going to be tracking this Munchlax. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that the program can recognize this image right here. And it doesn't need to be a capture card. It could be a camera pointed at your Switch's screen. But in my case, I have a capture card. And so we're going to do that. So I'm gonna click this little drop down and I'm gonna to go to config munchlax.json. And that's, this is the munchlax tracker. And then I'm gonna type in the name of my window here, which is an OBS monitor window. So I'm just gonna type in the word windowed. And then I'm gonna hit preview. And you'll see it's gonna open up a little preview window of what it's looking for, right? And then I'm gonna put this blue box over the munchlax's eyes. So I'm gonna click over here into the Y section that's in the top right. I'm gonna move my arrows down that close. I'm gonna click into the X section to move it along the X axis. Remember your, remember your algebra, X goes across and Y is up and down. And we'll get it so it's tracking the eyeball and when it blinks, it registers a blink. So we'll see here when it goes. Look, okay, so he blinked and it registered. So we're good, we're set up for the first part of it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this button called TID SID. And while it's monitoring, I'll explain what's happening here. So I'm gonna click TID SID, and then I'm gonna go over to the command prompt window that's tracking it. So you'll notice it says intervals one of 64, one, two of 64. So it needs to record this Munchlax blinking 64 times. And while it's doing that, what it's doing is getting the random number generator seed for the game. So all games, they don't have true randomness. They have sort of a, they basically just have a complex math problem running in the background where you feed it a seed value. And then based on that seed value, it spits out, oh boy. All right, so we had a little bit of a, we had a little bit of a breakdown there. 
I'm gonna increase the size of the eye window. I think maybe the eye kind of got out of the uh, frame there. Increase the size of the eye window and then move it over a little bit. That should be good. And then I'm just gonna hit stop TIDSID and start it again. Sometimes it'll error out, program's new, but we're moving along again. So it's at intervals one of 64. We need to get 64 blinks to register so that we can um, figure out our RNG seed. And once we know the seed, then we can figure out what our trainer ID and secret ID are going to be once we load into the game, which we need to know if we want to get shinies. Um, shinies are determined by a Pokemon's PID or personality ID matching up with your trainer ID and secret ID, which is hidden from you uh, in the game's data. So the only way for us to know that is to figure out what uh, what our secret ID is from the beginning. It's also possible to learn your secret ID via trading a Pokemon with someone who has custom firmware access, but I like to show ways of doing things without having custom firmware. Um, I like to do RNG manipulation without custom firmware. And so in this case, uh, we're going to do this out the long way, um, which is, I mean, it's fun in its own way, right? I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. So we have to wait for 64 blinks to happen and I'll probably leave this up and then probably speed up the footage. And then once the blinks are done, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Just a little editor's note here. We actually don't need the trainer ID and secret ID to get the starter shiny, but we do need the trainer ID and secret ID if in the future we'd like to get eggs shiny, which spoiler alert is also possible in this game. Uh, the same way that we're gonna get a shiny starter here in this video, it's possible to completely break open the random number generator and get yourself a shiny as I've done in this Twitch clip right here. Come on, baby, red eyes, red eyes, red eyes. Yes! 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 Okay, so the blinking is done and we will click over to the program here and you'll see that we now have these seed boxes um, populated. And so these are our RNG seeds. And where we're gonna put these is in my good friend Admiral Fish's program, uh, Pokefinder. So Pokefinder is a program that allows you to take the RNG seeds and predict what's going to happen in the future inside the game. So we're gonna click the TID SID button here and then I'm going to paste in my new seed. So in this case, that's the first one, seed zero. And this is the second one, seed one. And that's all we need to do. The seed is in here, and now we just have to advance our game. So I'm gonna go back to the game, and we'll just play through the game. I'll name my character. Uh, sure, this can be me. I'm gonna be Hefe, that's me. Get my little accented E here, gotta have it. Yes, it is. And then we're just gonna blast through this intro. This boy here, I believe is your friend. I'm gonna name this guy Blissy. I'm gonna name him Blissy. If you know who Blissy is, then you know what RNG manipulation is and you'd understand why I might name my rival him, even though we're friends in real life. Um, I'm making an RNG video and he's the RNG guy, so. All right, so we're done with that point. And one of the annoying things about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is you actually don't get your trainer card until after you've already done like the whole intro. So I can't just go and look at my trainer card immediately and find out what my seed was or what my trainer ID was. I have to play up until the Chimchar and you're thinking, well, if you have to play up until the Chimchar, then how are you gonna RNG the Chimchar? And the, how, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna save right here. Yes, I would like to save my adventure. So we've saved our adventure and now we can leave. And it's an emergency. We're just gonna run through this part here. God, you can't run this early in the game. Oh meh, <laughs> oh meh, it's rough. Oh, I just noticed that it auto saved. Another thing to do, turn off auto save and put tech speed on fast. Gotta do it, very important. Do not accidentally forget to do these things because if you auto save, you can't go back and you gotta do that blink process again. So now I'm actually gonna go up into my house and I'm gonna save one more time with auto save off. Good. Okay, now we can go back downstairs. 
And then we're gonna head over to what's his name's house? Thud. Now I gotta go inside. And we just gotta play through this whole point. We're not gonna save again. Remember, we cannot save another time. Head over to Verity Lakefront. And we're just gonna walk inside and we're gonna grab our starter and do the initial starter grab. We're not gonna save this starter. We just need to get our starter so we can find out what our trainer ID was. I'm gonna grab Chimchar. We're gonna be going for a shiny Chimchar today. Then I actually can't even check the summary in battle. I have to uh, kill this Pokemon and then eventually, then I can go into my bag and actually look at my Pokemon. Okay, go to Pokemon. We open it up and there's our trainer ID 211865. So now we're gonna go back over to Pokefinder and over here in filters, we're gonna type in our TID that we have from our Pokemon. So 211865. And then we're just going to do max advances, like maybe a thousand and hit generate. And there we are, we landed on frame 11. And so our trainer ID is 38425. Our secret ID is 25790 and our TSV is 3882. And so I can go to manager, I can create a new profile. And this is for my shining pearl version. This is for Hefe. And my trainer ID was, oops. 38425-25790. We are locked in. Okay. Done. And FA. So that is our trainer ID and secret ID, which we need to know so we can get shinies. And now we are going to reset the game. Now, the cool thing about this is that I don't think this is ever going to be patched unless they make all characters stop being able to blink. I don't think this is ever going to patch. 1.00, 1.11, 2, 3, 5, 7, 2.12. It's going to work. This isn't like, this isn't like a menu glitch. This is deep, deep coded stuff. They would have to fundamentally remake the game to fix this. And they never do fix it. Basically every game in all of Pokemon is capable of being RNG manipulated. And if you think that's pretty interesting, well then stick around, hit subscribe, like, cause that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> okay, so we're in our bedroom. And what are we going to do in here? Well, we are going to monitor some blinks. We need to find our seed after that reset. So you'll notice that we can't just stand still and monitor our character's blinks because he kind of fidgets like that. But there's one spot where you can go to get a text box up where he doesn't fidget. And that's right here talking to this Nintendo Switch. So if you talk to the Nintendo Switch, your character won't move. And you'll notice that you can still see one of his eyes. And that is enough for us to register some blinks. And so what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to our player blink tool here. And I was on uh, config munchlax, but I'm going to go to config starter room. I'm going to set this to windowed and I'm going to hit preview. And I'm going to get that little box right over our character's eye once again using these X and Y buttons. And you'll notice that I don't get the red box, right? And the reason I don't get the red box is because the image up here isn't actually an image of our character's eye. So we need to create one. Thankfully, we have a tool in that for Windows. It's called the snipping tool. I'm just gonna open up the snipping tool, hit new, and then I'm gonna drag a little box around our character's eye. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna bring it into the classic Microsoft Paint. Bring it into Microsoft Paint, and we're gonna hit crop. I'm going to zoom, 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 zoom in on that eye. I'm going to select just the eye and then I'm going to hit crop and file, save as PNG. And then we'll drop it into this images folder here. I'll drop it into this images folder here and I'm not going to put it in any folder in particular. I'm just going to call this starter room. Okay. You don't need to save the snip. And then we hit select eye, click starter room. And now you'll see we have a blue box and it's tracking the eye. And it should also be tracking blinks. See if it reads it when we do a blink. I'm actually going to bump the width up on this a little bit just because so, it's kind of wobbling. Perfect. Now we're nice and centered in that in that red box. Now I'm going to check and make sure that it. Yeah, OK, that's registering blinks just fine. And so now to get a new seed, I'm going to black out the one that we had before because we don't need that one anymore. We're going to hit monitor blinks. And what Monitor Blinks does is the same thing that it did with the Munchlax, but now it's going to be monitoring our character. And you'll see just right there, it said intervals blink logged one of 40. And so once we've logged 40 blinks, we will have the seed for this iteration of the game since we last started it up and landed in our room. And this is the seed that we'll be working with when we try to go for our first shiny starter attempt. 
So we have to wait for 40 blinks. I'll let this play out and then, uh, you know, I'll just speed it up, do another little montage or whatever, and then we'll come back and we'll move on with the process. Okay, we're back and you can see that our little black text box gave us some um, seeds and it's also clicking up advances. So in an area that doesn't have any other NPCs or Pokemon or anything else, the RNG is advancing at one per second. Um, and as you can see, it counts up at one per second. And if I were to, you know, take this text box away and start fidgeting, it would go up a little bit more because the when your character wiggles, it's based on different intervals. So we can't actually trust that number anymore, so I'm not gonna look at it. But what we can trust is the seed itself. So this is our new seed, and we're just gonna hold on to that, and then we're gonna move on with uh, the process here of doing the beginning of the game. So I'm gonna, you know, hit stop preview, and I'm just gonna go back to this window, and now we have to advance to the next spot in the process. And so we just play through the intro up until the point when we're standing in front of Lake Verity. Okay, so I'm here in front of Lake Verity. And now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to use this button that says re-identify. And so what re-identify does, it tells us what our RNG position is after all of the movement that's happened since we left our house, picked up Barry, came over here and now we're standing in front. So right now the frames are cooking, the frames are moving. We could be on advanced number 12,000. We don't wanna be there. We wanna re-identify our frame. So we need to get to a place that doesn't have as much noise. And thankfully there's a place like that right inside here once this cutscene starts. So we don't save here, we don't do anything. Our save is always in our bedroom. Uh, we walk in and we start this cutscene. And so this cutscene plays, the frames are moving, the frames are moving. These two are doing their, doing their back and forth, their classic hoo-ha. Excuse me, let us pass, please. She gets mad, yes, yes, yes. And then they walk by and Barry, or Blissey in this case, says, what was that about those two? And we're gonna stop here. So this is where we can re-identify because you'll notice we have our character here and we have Barry here, or Blissey here. Now, you can't use the main monitor blinks. You can't find your initial seed when you have two NPCs because the two blinks are playing off each other and it just creates too much variance to be able to tell exactly what seed we're on. But when you already know your seed, with an NPC, you can still find out what your current position is. And so that's when I switch my dropdown to config underscore starter. And all these little configs come with the program. And you'll see that over here, NPCs has changed to one. And then a bunch of these other things have changed. Advanced delay, 41, 48. NPCs during timeline, minus one. Pokemon NPCs, two. We'll worry about that as we're moving forward. All we need to know is that right now, what we can do here is we can hit preview and you'll see that I've already lined this up just to make it a little uh, more, just a little quicker. The box is lined up on Barry's eye. So we're actually going to hit re-identify and track Barry's blinks. And Barry's blinks are gonna give us the number of advances that have happened since we got our initial seed. And so once again, we'll be watching blinks. There we go. And we only have to do 20 this time. We don't have to do 40. We only need 20 blinks to get a accurate calculation of what our current RNG position is. And so just like before, we're gonna wait for these 20 blinks. I'll probably speed it up. And then uh, we will see what my current frame is. Okay, so we're back and it looks like about 10,000 frames advanced while we were walking around and that is just fine. So now we have everything we need to figure out how to get to our starter. We have our seeds and we have Pokefinder and we have our advances. So I'm gonna go to the Gen 8 tab here in Pokefinder and I'm gonna hit static. And that is gonna open up this window, static Gen 8. And first thing to do, do not forget, I gotta select my profile. So that's Hefe, that's my trainer ID and secret ID for Shining Pearl. We go to category, gifts, Pokemon, I'm aiming for Chimchar. And then I'm gonna clear these because I was doing a test attempts. And now we're gonna plug in our seed into Pokefinder. And then we're gonna set our initial advances to about where we're at here. 
So I'm just gonna put in 10,500 and then we're gonna generate around 10,000 more and we're gonna go shiny star square and hit generate. And so it looks like we have one at 10, 920. So that's great. That's actually really close. Now we don't just wait for 10, 920 and then go. We have to worry about this timeline section. And thankfully, I've actually already come up with some with a, with some nice tricks to sort of make that a little bit easier, right? So I have a little notepad document here and here I'll blow this up, our handy dandy friend notepad. So we start the timeline at 200 before our target. And so our target is 10, 9, 20. And so we start our timeline at 10, 7, 20. And so we're about 400 away from there. So we have some time, we have some time. And then our target, when we do our last A press is 63 before our target. And that's just a delay that I've calculated that will gradually probably mess with. Whoa, I was dragging my window. That's something we'll probably mess with over time. And so I'm just gonna take my target frame, 10, 9, 20, and I'm gonna subtract, oh, 10, 9, 20, and I'm gonna subtract 63 from it. And this is the frame where I'm gonna hit my last A press. So 10, 8, 5, 7, 10, 8, 5, 7. And that's everything we need for now. So I'm gonna keep that right here because I'm gonna need to know those values. I'm gonna keep this window right here because I need to watch this advances here. And then I need to have my actual gameplay. And so this is everything we need to do our attempt. And so it's about time to uh, head for our gym char. And so the first thing that we're gonna do when this advances number hits 10, 7, 20, like we've calculated up here, when this hits 10, 7, 20, we're gonna click the timeline button. And when what timeline does is timeline is gonna simulate all of the advances that are gonna happen due to the cutscene. And actually I need to advance to the next text box because this is not the next text box. The next text box is right here. It is, I heard them say professor. So when I hit A, so the starlies are gonna fly in. And when the starlies fly in, it causes 41 frames of advances. And then Pokemon NPCs goes up to two and our NPCs stop blinking. So, that's, uh, that's what the timeline does. It simulates things happening to change the rate of frame advancement so we get an accurate prediction, right? So when this hits 10, 7, 20, I'm gonna click timeline and then the timer is gonna start counting down. And then when that timer goes to zero, I'm gonna hit A and then I'm gonna advance to the next A press and then it'll be time to wait for our final starter A press at 10, 8, 5, 7. So I'm just gonna wait until 10, 720 and we're very close i got super lucky i did not stage this this is actually my first attempt on this file and i got super lucky that we got a close one so i don't have to do a lot of cutting sometimes it's like a couple thousand away and you got to do a lot of waiting which sucks but that's just the way it is you know so it's advancing at two per second here because there's two of us so it's that the, it's counting for two npcs so there's 10 701 and we're also on an odd number which is fine i'll just do it at 10 19. 11 13 15, 17, 19, click timeline. So now it's going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I'm gonna hit A. And then I'm gonna hit A one time and then I'm gonna wait here because there's actually two text boxes there. And then when the timer goes to zero this time, I'm gonna hit A again to advance to the briefcase screen. So right now you'll notice that the characters aren't blinking, but the Pokemon are on screen and the Pokemon blinks are what's moving the timer. And the game, the program just knows how to predict when the Pokemon are going to blink based on our seed. And so when timer hits zero, I'm going to press A. So two, one, zero. I hit A. And now we're in the briefcase. So Chimchar is the middle Pokemon. And so I, I can't press A yet. I have to do two A presses to finish it because Chimchar on screen also causes a blink. So I just have to wait until 10, 8, 5, 7 appears on the advances there. And the advances are right here. And when 10, 8, 5, 7 pops up, I'm gonna be very quick, click on the Pokeball and then hit yes. And then we're gonna go into the battle and see if we got our shiny. I don't think we will. We'll probably have to do some adjusting, but uh, you know, that's just the way it is. This is our first attempt on this file and you don't always get it first try. I'd be sick if we did, but I don't want to because I want to show you how you look up what your delay is. So five, two, 
Five three. Five four. Five five. Five six. Five seven. A. Eh? A. Eh. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we hit. Did we get a shiny starter? It'd be crazy if we got it. I cannot stress enough that it would be absolutely insane if I got this. Because I have not gotten it yet. No, I don't know. Okay, it's a regular Chimchar. Oh, it's a regular Chimchar. That's how it's going to be sometimes. Um, so now we actually have to finish the battle. Because we can't look at Chimchar's stats in here. Uh, we need to be able to see Chimchar's stats to be able to figure out what we hit. Alright, Bliss is going to say some garbage. And now we can go into our menu and check out which Chimchar we got so this chimchar is a bashful nature that's a good piece of information uh we're gonna go over here to our poke finder we're gonna take off this filter here because we had it on shiny only we're gonna hit any and we're gonna set nature to bashful right and then the second thing we need to do is figure out the ivs and the easiest way to figure out the ivs is to plug them into a stat calculator and thankfully we have Chimchar stats right here. And Pokefinder actually comes with a stat calculator built in. IV calculator, there we go. We open up the IV calculator and we are in game, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. The Pokemon is Chimchar. The nature is Bashful. And the characteristic is, what was his characteristic? He's highly curious, so characteristic, define highly curious. There we go. And then we just put in the stats here, so level five. Level five, HP 19, attack 11, defense nine, special attack 12, special defense nine, speed 11. And then we're gonna hit find IVs. So we have ranges for the IVs here. And now we can go over here and type in those ranges. So 0 to 11, 4 to 23, 0 to 11, uh, 25 or 30. So that one's because of the characteristic. We get a nice tight value on that. 0 to 11 and 0 to 17. So now we should be able to figure out what frame we hit instead of 10, 9, 20. And I'm just going to hit generate. And it looks like we hit 10, 9, 21. That's the only one even close. So we were one frame late, ladies and gentlemen. One frame late just one single blink or just me hitting it one frame earlier and bam we would have had our shiny starter that's great so what i could do is i could make this 63 number slightly different right so 63 is 63 early we hit one frame later right than we want to so we we would actually want to go one extra frame earlier so i could change that to 64 right and i could just do it again because it could have just been chance you know i was one off like one frame is not a lot it's not as tight as like gen 3 to where it's like 16.667 milliseconds but uh you know it's it, like things can get in the way you know and you have to do two a presses there so you might want to give yourself an extra frame of leeway i'm I think I will. I think I'm going to go to 64. So we're going to start doing attempts at 64. Um, I'm going to be recording all of my attempts. And if anything interesting happens along the way, I will make cutaways. But it's going to take a few attempts to get it. You're not going to get it every time. But the advantage is that when you get it, you got it for sure. And you knew it was coming versus you sitting there forever doing briefcase simulator, doing all of these, you know, long ass resets. The resets take like three minutes a pop, man. They're so awful. Whereas with this, you can get it guaranteed. The only caveat being that you pretty much need a capture card or a decent camera to be able to record this because it's you can't do the blinks manually. You need to have a program recording the blinks. So I'm gonna reset. That was good. We were one frame off, that's sweet. And now we just do it again. All right, folks, you know the drill by now. Uh, we're ready to start the timeline at 5179 advances here. And then after we start the timeline, we're gonna hit A. When it clicks, gets to zero. Wait for the Starlies. Head in. 
Try to get our starter on frame 5379. Getting close. 10 to go. 65, 67, 69, 71, 73, 75, 77, 79. Timeline. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Starly's pop. One text box. And we wait for the Starly's to blink. 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero. All right. Now we wait for five, three, one, seven. Just 12 to go. One, zero. One, one. One, two. One, three. One, four. One, five. One, six. One, seven. I didn't see Chimchar blink during that time frame. This could be it. I like my odds here. I like my odds here. Can I see a shiny Chimchar? Yes! Oh, we did it, baby! Oh my god, my quest is done! Oh, baby! This is gonna be an impish, an impish shiny Chimchar. Just to prove to you that the RNG works, I know this thing's nature is gonna be impish, and I know it's IVs. We will calc them to show you the truth. But my friends, my friends, my friends, it is done. Oh my goodness. What a journey we have been on together. You don't know how long this took me. Oh my God, I can't wait to mash through this cutscene. I cannot wait to mash through this cutscene and check the stats and show you exactly what we hit. Ain't no cheats being used here. This is a non-custom firmware switch. I will show you, I will show you. Oh my goodness. All right, Barry, please, 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 please. Okay, here we go. What do you guys think? Is it gonna be impish? Of course it's gonna be impish. Impish. And then we'll type in the stats just to prove it. IV calculator, nature, impish. And its stats are 19, 12, 11, 9, 10, 12. Find IVs, and it should match up with Pokefinder exactly. HP, 0 to 11, check. Attack, 12, 24 to 31, nice attack, IV, beautiful. Uh, defense, 16, uh, yeah, that's between 12 and 31. Special attack, 21, that's between 0 and 23. Special defense, 13, that's between 12 and 31. And speed, 27, that's between 18 and 31. My friends, that is a successful RNG manipulation on pure non-CFW. And just, just to show you, that is on version 1.1.3. We can look in my system settings. This is not a custom firmware switch. This is on the current firmware, no atmosphere, no nothing. This <laughs> is beautiful. Oh my God, I'm so happy. This is the part where I get to say thank you to everybody who watched this video and most importantly to everybody who worked on the tools and the methods and everything that went into making this possible. This is not something that is normal for a Pokemon game. I mean, this game came out in November and we already have the ability to RNG manipulate on retail hardware. Let me tell you, I stand on the shoulders of giants. I take basically no credit for being able to do this other than just sheer determination. It's 6.41 in the morning um, I'm streaming tomorrow, 1, 6, or today, 1, 16 at 3 p.m. on my Twitch. Uh, this video is going to upload and go up before then. I was so excited that I had it. I stayed up all night editing, and I'm going to render it. I'm going to get some sleep, and then I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. So, so just to go through the credits, thank you to Lincoln, 
Uh, well, actually, first of all, thank you to Nyart for making Project XS. That's the blink tracker. Nyart is the person that originally made the Japanese version and is currently pushing out updates. Lincoln handles the English version and the translation. Um, and then huge, huge thanks to Admiral Fish, uh, who's actually a friend of mine. I play D&D with him on Sundays, as well as I'm a Blissey. Uh, he makes Pokefinder. Pokefinder's amazing. You can use it for so many different Pokemon games for this. Uh, he's a genius. God, I love that dude. And man, thanks to everybody else in the RNG Discord. There's tons of people. Zach's a beast for making Capture Sight. And it's just, it's, God, I can't even begin to name all the names. They're such wonderful people. And if you found this interesting at all, the Pokemon RNG Reddit and the Pokemon RNG Discord are where you need to go. And also check out I'm a Blissey on YouTube. This is beyond exciting. I can't wait to show you guys what else we can do. I want to go in depth with BDSP RNG. There's still eggs. There's still legendary Pokemon. There's still Romanus Park. There's even potentially wild Pokemon on non-CFW. So this is amazing stuff. You'll see more from me on this in the future uh, in the lead ups to Legends Arceus. And then the world is blown wide open. I can't wait for it. See you soon. Peace.